السلام عليكم وعليكم السلام how are you alhamdulillah how is things oh nice view behind you this is real or uh, fake no no this is not real yeah yeah i know yeah i'm just joking yeah okay, how are you yeah, alhamdulillah very good okay my name is bilal okay full name is bilal hanif <laughs> and uh, i have been teaching and i have been teaching from last you can say eight years okay okay and, uh, i have qualified my acca and i'm also qualified icma acca is obviously you know what is acca icma is our local degree for the cost management accountant and i work as a manager audit in a textile company and i teach as well of course mm -hmm. okay so this is my introduction so what what about you what you are doing what you have done yes, yes uh, so i finished my uh, master degree from australia in accounting okay. and then after that i joined uh, deloitte deloitte and such as a, an audit uh, associate. So uh, I reached, uh, you know, until a senior now. So I'm in audit field. Okay. Yeah. You're still in Deloitte? Yeah, I'm Deloitte. So I went back to the industry for like, um, you know, one and a half year for an insurance company as a senior accountant, then back to Deloitte. So I just, you know, took, a, you know, a one and a half year in the industry. Then I went back to uh, the Deloitte. So now I'm a senior. Okay. From where do you belong? Do you belong to Saudi Arabia or? Yeah, I'm I'm from Medina Manawara, Saudi Arabia. Yeah. Mashallah. You are living in Medina? No, I'm 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 originally from Medina, but I'm living in uh, the eastern province because you know uh, Medina doesn't have too much uh, companies there. You know, only hotels and. Uh, it's not that in not that developed country like Riyadh, Jeddah, the Mom. So I'm living in Dammam now, at the moment. You're in Dammam. My brother is yep. my brother is near to you. My brother lives in Jubail. Oh, mashallah. So um, he's also maybe in Sabik, I think, right or what? Yes, he's in Sabik. Ah, uh, also I'm I'm doing uh, now my engagement actually in Sabik now. So every day I go from Dammam to Jubail every day, like back and forth. I'm doing uh, like a secondment with the Sabik. Okay, mashallah. He's in finance. He's, I think, senior manager finance. I think. Mashallah. Okay, good. Okay, so uh, you have started CIA, or you have given some given gave some paper, or you just have to start. No, the, since my um, graduation from master degree from two thousand and sixteen until today, I only did one exam which I did not pass, like it was almost going to be passed uh, for this uh, IFRS diploma. It's an I IFRS diploma. So I uh, did not pass for that exam. And I will do it, inshallah, in December this uh, 23. So now I'm, my plan is to take the part one CIA, then do this uh, diploma IFRS in uh, December 23. And my plan for CIA part one will be in... Um, August, so June, July, and mid of August, at least, you know, two and a half months studying, then ala tool. Okay, inshallah. I'm currently teaching IFRS in Saudi uh, I have one person teaching. I, he lives in Riyadh. 
So I'm teaching in my FRS. I took one course from Vertex Solution. It's also from is a Pakistani or Indian. I have no idea. His name is Ali. But Vertex Solution, if you know this website. Yes, I have listened to the name. Yeah, yeah. They they have really a good uh, presentation, like you know um, the portal and the complete. Uh, yeah, the website is is uh, friendly. Yeah. Yes, they are developing. Yeah, that I for us. Yeah, yeah. So now this um, session is um, so me and you, or we have other um, um, students. No, I I I have. We only have. We are two. We are only two here. And if there is any admission for me in ICIA, still I have not got any admission. If I got some admission, so I will just add him, or else we will be doing it together. We will be. Much, no problem. No problem. Yeah. So we can start a bit. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, let's go. Okay. If you have given the paper, I think you would be familiar with the syllabus. No, I have, haven't really taken any paper for the CIA. Okay, you have not taken. Sorry. I am uh, confused with the FIS. Okay. So when we talk about the syllabus, uh -huh. this is the syllabus website. So first of all, we have the foundations of for the internal auditing. Okay. This is part of the syllabus, 15%. Okay, 15% paper would be tested from this part. In this, you have to we have to discuss for the IA mission of the internal audit, the definitions and the principles, core principles for the practice of internal auditing, purpose, authority, yeah. responsibility, all these. Okay. Yeah. If you cannot hear me, just you can, or you cannot understand something, so you can stop me because I cannot see you. So I don't know what you are understanding or not understanding. Oh, uh, just a second. So you want me to open that, you know, uh, no, it's video? Not, is... No, it's not important that you open the video. Oh. Because I'm saying that if you have any issue, you can just stop me. No problem. Definitely. Yeah. Then in the B part of this syllabus, in this part, we will be just discussing the requirement of the internal audit charter. You know, you must know okay. that every company has some internal audit charter that they yep. required, what would be the components of the charter, what would be the board, when, when, what board approvals would be there and how to communicate that charter to the whole department. All this mm -hmm. the study here. Then okay. we have to discuss about the difference between the assurance and the consulting services. Obviously, you know that the audit firm is providing both services, the assurance yeah. services and the consulting services. And these yes. are a bit confusing, you can say, or it's a threat to the auditor. That's it is providing the consulting service as well as the assurance services. So uh -huh. we'll just study what differences between the assurance and the consulting service, how it is provided by the internal audit activity. Then okay. we have to discuss the confirmance of the code of ethics. Every professional body, ACCA, you can say or CIA, everybody gives code of ethics. So the IAA, IIA has also given its code of ethics. So we'll just study about it and we will discuss what is the code of ethics given by the IIA, the body of CIA. Okay, so yeah. this was our yeah. first topic, 15% syllabus. Now, the second topic is this one, this one the 15 percent and the above one so this one is like uh, the part one is divided into these kind of things into yeah, yeah. So, the, so the part one of cia is divided into this foundation of internal audit and then the below subject and then okay yeah so first, okay. first domain is the foundation of internal audit auditing it's 15 mm. percent then the second topic we will cover in this part one yeah. is the independence and the objectivity it's the okay. same percentage, 15%. What we have to study in this, I'm just telling a concise, then we'll study in detail. That mm -hmm. first is the organizational independence of internal audit activity. How the okay. internal audit activity should be independent from the organizations. Importance mm -hmm. of independence, functional reporting, etc. We'll discuss this. Mm -hmm. Then what are the effects or you can say, what are the impairment to the independence? That when the 
auditor does not remain independent. How its independence can be damaged. Yeah. Okay. So we'll study this. Then we have to maintain and assess the internal auditor objectivity, including determining internal auditor has impairments to our objectivity. These are all the risks for the auditor. If his objectivity is impaired, so he would not be performing the activity well. So how this can be impaired and the activities you can say, or what are the examples when the auditor's objectivity can be impaired? We'll discuss this. Then okay. we'll discuss how to promote objectivity. What are the policies the firm can do or the internal auditor can apply? How he can promote objectivity? So this is our independence and objectivity. Okay. Yep. Then these are all the you can say the qualities of the auditor. Then the third part is the proficiency and the due professional care. Obviously, an auditor is a professional, so he has to show, show some professionalism. He has the knowledge, skills, and competencies required to fulfill the internal auditor activity. Then he will demonstrate his knowledge and competency to perform his own activities. Yeah. He must have communication skills. He must have critical thinking. He must have the negotiation skills, the collaboration skills, etc. Then mm -hmm. due professional care, he should be careful because he's doing a very big work. He has all the accounts of the company. He has all the secrets of the company. So he must be performing it with due professional care. Yes. Then he's CPD continuing professional development, you know, you have done the accountancy course and now you are doing the CIA. So the auditor must be professionally developing itself every time. He would not be mm -hmm. sitting idle. He would be doing some courses for the his development. So CPD continuing professional development every course has. ACCA also has its CPDRs. I, CIA also have every professional course has CPDRs. Okay. Then we'll talk about the quality. Here we talk about independence and objectivity. These are the qualities of the auditor. The proficiency and the due professional care. Is these, this is also the quality of auditor. Now the quality yep. assurance and the improvement program. What are the required elements for the quality assurance? How you would be performing the quality audit? What are the improvement programs? How you have to assess your assess your performance? Internal assessments can be done. External assessments can be done. Then re requirement of reporting the results of the quality assurance and improvement programs. Okay, so they have different programs for the assessment of the quality. What quality the auditor is giving? How? What are the quality of its audit, working papers, all these? Yeah. So that that result will be communicated. How it will be communicated? Okay. Then we have to identify appropriate disclosure of conference conformance versus non-conformance with the IAS international standards. If the auditor is applying the ISA, the standards of the audit, so it's good. He must tell it. Or if he is not, so he will just tell that why he is not conforming with the ISA. Mm -hmm. He will explain it. Okay, this is only 7%. Now the major part is 35%. That is governance, risk management, and control. Okay, here we will so when, you say, when you say 35%, do you mean from the course or from the exam test? Uh, from the exam point of view, 35% marks would be coming from here. Ah, 35 marks from the exam. Okay, yeah, I thought the content that this will take is that percent. Yeah, okay, so complete, yeah. About exam. And obviously, oh, okay. if it's 35%, the course should be more. Content should be more. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So he will discuss here about the concept of the organization governance, how the organization is governed, the culture of overall control environment. It's about the organization, that how the organization will promote the internal order activity, the risk environment, all these. 
then the inter organizational ethics and compliance, then the CSR, corporate social responsibility, then the fundamental concepts of risk and risk management process. Then these are some frameworks, the COSO framework, the ERM, the ISO 31000. All these are the uh, frameworks which are very important. You have to study it. Yeah. And the effectiveness of risk management within the process and the functions. Then you can you will recognize the appropriateness of the internal activity, organization risk management process. Then you have to interpret the control concepts and the types of control the organization is applying. Okay. Then you have to apply the globally accepted internal control framework that is COSO and all. Then you have to examine the effectiveness and the efficiency of internal control. The okay. internal control should be effective and should be efficient as well. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So this is our 35%, the governance, risk management, and control. Mm -hmm. Then the last 10% is fraud risk. We'll talk about the frauds. What are the fraud risk types of fraud? Fraud risk requires special considerations when you are conducting a special engagement or firms have special departments for the fraud identification and all these arrangements. Then you have potential for occurrence of frauds, red flags, et cetera, and the organization detects and manage fraud risk. We will recommend the controls to prevent and detect fraud. Then we recognize the techniques and internal roles for the forensic auditing. Then interview, investigation, testing, how this is done, how the auditor is doing all these. We'll discuss this. Okay. Oh, yeah. So this will be the headlines. Yes, this is our total course. Okay. Mm -hmm. This percentage first is the foundations of internal auditing. Then we talk about the independence and objectivity, then the proficiency and the due professional care, then the quality assurance and the improvement programs. This, this is a big topic, governance, risk management and control. And the last is fraud risk. So this uh, this document that you have, is it like uh, shareable? You will share it with us so we can study or? Uh... Yes, I will share it with you. Uh -huh. This is available on the IEA website, but I will share it with you so you can have it and save it with you. Okay. This is, this, is so this one This one will be our reading uh, uh, material, right? The one that you are having now or no? Sorry, again, what do you say? Uh, is this is the reading material that we will study it? through the course or this one is only like uh, an introduction for the no, this, um, is, this is only the introduction only the syllabus this one huh yeah this is available oh. on the IEA website this is the official document it's available this is the study material which i will oh, this is the pdf the this is the, the details you know study material this one yeah Actually, okay so this one yeah is, is this one like um updated like every year or is it every quarter or every every three years or is it like uh, halas? This one, I, I need, uh, a new um, uh, edition, this one, or? Yes, it's it's for those 2023, okay? Uh -huh. It's updated every year, but if de it depends that if there is a change in the syllabus, you can use the uh, 2022 book as well, but there are slight changes. If there are slight yeah. changes, you can use the previous book as well. No, yeah. I am saying this one because, you know, the IFRS, it's almost like every now and then is changing and being updated the IFRS but for the internal audit this is uh, the IAA code like the the internal audit standards ISA I think or ISA um, I think it's not like the IFRS but so much uh, dynamic like it, it change every like you know one year or any events because the IFRS is it's changeable it's always you know a dynamic right these standards for IFRS so if you take the study uh, material for 22 and it's not going to be that you know much you know effective for 23 because there's so many changes happened in uh, I, IFRS 16 for example or no IS 16 you know property plan and equipment so my point is is the internal audit also evolving and changing or is it like a slow moving you know standards like it's not that much change happens you know for recent years no it's not that much moving 
Yeah, not that much more. Yeah. Like not like ACCA. ACCA uh, changes its syllabus every two years, every one yeah, year. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, but they do not change that much. But if there is a major is, change, they tell that this material is not valid now. But and if, for example, if I take um, um, uh, a, um, a material for 2020 for uh, CIA, it will be applicable, right? It's better to use the new material. It I'm, will I'm, be I'm just saying that. I'm just... The slight changes could be there. Uh -huh, okay, okay, no the slight changes, you can say a little bit of definitions you can say or the part of syllabus, the unit one, the unit two, they divide the mm. syllabus in unit one, unit two. So some things will come in unit one, some things will go to unit two. That's it. That's not, there's not a major change. Uh, bilkul, bilkul. Okay. So now we have this okay. now, the syllabus is now the study unit one. We can say this is this chapter one for our okay. part one. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have this foundations of internal auditing. Okay. Here we'll be studying about the applicable guidance, then the introduction and the principles for the ethics. Then ethics, you have integrity, objectivity, confidentiality, competency, and we'll discuss the internal audit charter. What it is. Okay. So this is our part of the 15% syllabus. Just mm -hmm. we discussed it. Foundations of internal auditing. Okay. Okay. So the learning objectives first, we have to discuss the IEA mission of internal audit. We discuss this definition of internal auditing, then the requirements of internal audit charter, the difference between the assurance and consulting services and IEA code of ethics. These, these are repeat. Okay. Hmm. So now this is the applicable guidance. Okay. The IPPF framework, International Professional Practice Framework. Okay. And every mm -hmm. uh, when you talk about professional studies, ACCA, CIA, these frameworks are a bit more important than your usual studies. Okay, mm -hmm. a question is more likely to come from the framework because it's learnable. You can learn this framework. Okay, these are small mm -hmm. principles. You have to discuss it. So these frameworks are important in your professional studies. Okay, first. There's a definition of the mission of the internal audit. The definition is to enhance and protect the organization value by providing risk-based and objective assurance, advice, and insight. Okay. It's better to learn the definition of the standard. Okay. Yeah. So you just provide this definition that would be good enhance and protect your organization value by providing risk space and objective assurance, advice, and insight. Okay. Uh -huh. It will facilitate the achievement of the mission is mm -hmm. the IPPF. The IPPF con contains the mandatory guidance and the recommended guidance. Uh -huh. The area in blue is the mandatory guidance and the area in gray is the recommended guidance. When you talk about the mandatory guidance, you have some core principles, you have the definition, you have some standards, and you have code of ethics. Yeah. Okay. Then when we talk about the recommended guidance, we have the implementation guidance, how to implement, then how the supplemental guidance. You will provide an ongoing guidance. We'll just uh, study these all things in detail here. Okay. First is yeah. the mandatory guidance. Okay. Adherence to the mandatory guidance is very essential. Okay. For the practice of internal auditing, the mandatory guidance consists four principles, definition of the internal auditing, code of ethics, and the standards. The core principles. The definition. Okay. So the core yeah. principles and the definition of internal auditing are reflected in the code of ethics and the standards. Thus, Confirmance with the code and standards demonstrate confirmance with all mandatory elements of the IPPF. So mm -hmm. here you have to confirm with all the guidance because this is mandatory. Then if the standards are used with the requirements of other authoritative bodies, internal audit communication also may be seen side the other requirements. But if the standards and other requirements are inconsistent, internal auditors 
must conform with the standards and may conform with other requirements if they are more restrictive. Okay. So, uh, uh, when you say confirm, they have to confirm to whom? To the to whom they have to confirm? Actually, this is that confirm that you have to comply with that. Comply standard. with this with the standards. So he's saying that if the standards are used with the requirements of other authoritative bodies. Yeah. So an example of this one, like, uh, so company A is, is doing like, uh, I, this is as a parent company, you mean, and subsidiaries or what? If the standards are used with requirements of other authoritative, uh -huh. so if you, if you can just, you know, eliminate on, um, uh, like, uh, you can just uh, example for the first, you know, uh, sentence. If the standards are used with requirements of other authoritative bodies, internal audit communication also might be cited. The other requirements. Can you please like? Uh, yes, this is this is like that. If you are, for example, you are working in Saudi Arabia, okay, um, and there are some requirements of the government, okay. The, the okay. company must comply with some government rules and regulations. And there are some standards relating to audit. Okay. Mm -hmm. If they come in front of each other, that you have some requirements of your government that you have to comply with, and some standards say that you must not comply with that. Okay. If they come in front of each other, so you have to conform with the standards. Okay. And for example, if they are more restrictive, like in Saudi Arabia, for example, if you do, do not comply with that law, so your company okay. can be closed. So Definitely. then you have to, if they are more restrictive, so you have to comply with your government laws. Then you have to leave the standards. Otherwise, okay. you have to comply with the standards first. Did you get okay. the point now? Yeah, yeah. So first of all, you just, you know, take the standards. If you see that, you know, the restriction is higher than, you know, the standards, then you can just um, leave the standards and just, you know, apply for the government or the, the country. Yeah. Law. Your country standards or your hmm. industry practices, whatever it is. Hmm. Okay. Then, now, first we talk about element one of the four, that is the core principles. Okay. The core principles are the basics, are the basis for the internal audit effectiveness. If these are not achieved, the internal audit would be not effective. The internal uh -huh. audit function is effective if all principles are present and operating effectively. The 10 core uh -huh. principles are you have to demonstrate integrity. Uh -huh. Okay. We all know what it is in integrity. Then yeah, the honesty, yeah, complete honesty. Yeah, complete honesty. You have to demonstrate your competence and due professional care. Mm -hmm. You have to work competently and with your due professional care. You should be objective and free free from undue influence. Okay. You would be not mm -hmm. be in the influence of the company owner or your manager, whatever. Okay. You should be independent. You should be aligned with your strategy, objectives, and the risk of the organizations. Okay, your, you should be aligned with your strategies, what you have to achieve, what is your objective, and what are the major risks of the organizations. You must know and you must be aligned with that. Yeah. Then you have to appropriately position and adequately resourced. Obviously, you have to work and you have a lot of work, so you must have resources to do that. Yeah, like, you know, um, uh, team, like, you know, resources, like, for example, uh, Human resource that 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 could be right. Human resource, any kind of uh, advanced, like you know, me, yeah, yeah. Maybe. So you at least you will, you will be equipped. You can you can have the yeah. enough equipments for you to do the mission. Yeah. Yes, you must be equipped. You must have your softwares. You must have your access to the documents. If they are saying we will not allow you to see this, we will not allow you to see see this. So you do not have your all the resources. Okay, so you must be equipped. You must have your computer. You must have human resource. You must have time. Yeah. If they say you have to present the report tomorrow, so you cannot present it. You must have time. Uh -huh. Okay. Then you have to communicate effectively. Okay, this is very important. You live in Medina. You must know Arabic. 
you must you you know english so it's very effective for you uh -huh. then you have to provide a risk based assurance okay you will not give an any absolute assurance okay so what is that well, can you please uh, add more for this point like provide risk based assurance so more more uh, examples or some some example for this point here by this point they mean that you have you cannot provide absolute assurance that i am i am damn sure that it is free from any material mistake you cannot say that because uh -huh. you have you are a human being you must have missed, made some mistakes so you must see it from the point of view that i have covered all the risk i cannot remove all the risk but i can mitigate the risk okay so okay. you must give a reasonable assurance you can say absolute assurance you cannot give you give risk based assurance that these are i have tried to mitigate all the risk which can be involved in this task yes yeah, like the external orders like when we put the opinion we say you know we have done our reasonable assurance right yes yes same point uh, of view same point okay they provide risk based assurance. then you have insightful you must have information you must have look at it from the inside then you should be proactive and you should be future focused mm -hmm. then you have to promote the organization's improvement by your audit the organization must improve okay yeah then these are the core principles which should be there in every audit okay then your audit would be effective internal audit effectiveness okay then we talk about the definition of the internal auditing okay. internal auditing is an independent objective assurance and consulting activity designed to add value and improve an organization's operations it helps an organization accomplish its objectives by bringing a systematic disciplined approach to evaluate and improve the effectiveness of risk management control and the governance process okay there are many things in this definition internal audit should be independent it yeah. should give objective assurance and it will consult it will give and consulting activity okay it will consult the business they will it will they will advise okay yeah. so they can add value to the company and improve the organization performance or operations then it will help the organization to achieve its objectives yeah. by bringing a systematic disciplined approach so they can evaluate and improve the effectiveness of they must assess or manage the risk they must control the environment and the organization should be properly governed mm. okay so this is the definition of internal auditing so we have completed the core principles then the definition now we talk about the code of ethics Perfect. yeah okay we say code of ethics will be discussed in later later in the subunits we have a separate topic of code of ethics okay we'll discuss it in detail in that unit okay. so it's jumping towards the element 4 standards. Yeah. okay the standards known formally as the international standards for professional practice of internal auditing serve the following four purpose the standards serve our four purposes first it guide adherence with the mandatory elements of the internal professional practice framework it will right. us so we can achieve or we can just apply the mandatory elements of the ippf then it provide a framework for performing and promoting a broad range of value added internal auditing services okay if there is no specific standard for anything so it will provide a framework so we can just assess that we are working under the framework or not if there is mm -hmm. no specific standard for anything so we look at the framework then we will start okay. sorry you are saying something 
No, no. So you are saying that if there is no any specific standard, then we will just see the framework, and then from that, we can. Uh, why don't we see uh, any uh, any related cases or some pinch marks like in the? If you have some related cases, so you can discuss it in that. Uh, but actually, when we talk about a specific situation, the, when there is yeah. no guidance in the standards, so framework is very important for us. We have to comply with the framework. Mm. Okay. Mm. Then we have to establish the basis of evaluation for the internal audit performance, how to evaluate the performance of the audit. Then we have to foster the improvement of national processes and operations. Then okay. you can improve the national process and operations. Mm -hmm. The standards are very vital to the practice of internal auditing, but CIA candidates need not to memorize them. You know, you not do not have to learn it, but you have okay. to. Uh, the principles should be clear to you. Okay. How they are applied, how they are thoroughly understood. It should be thoroughly understood to you. And the internal audit standards. It's it's available, right? The internal audit standards. Yes, we have, we will discuss the internal audit standards, but you do not have to remember the number of the standards. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but I'm just saying, um, are those standards available on the internet? So, I mean, yes, we will study some standards here in this in this unit, and these standards are available on the internet. Awesome. Now, there are some types of the standards, the attribute standards, you can say, the performance standards, the interpretation and the implementation standards. Uh, just a minute, uh, that this meeting will end after two minutes, okay? Because of uh, Zoom allow only 40 minutes meeting. So uh -huh. I will just send you another link, then you can join again. Okay. Okay. So we have some types of standards. What are the attribute standards? It describes the characteristics of the organizations and parties providing internal auditing services. They govern the responsibility, attitudes, and actions of the organization internal audit activity and the people who serve as internal auditors. Attribute standards are displayed in green boxes throughout this text to emphasize their importance. Okay, there are some types of standards. First is attribute. They describe the characteristics of organizations and the parties providing the internal auditing okay. services. They will tell us the responsibility, attitude, and action of the organization's internal audit activity and the people who serve as internal auditors. Then you have some performance standards. It describes the nature of internal auditing activity, provide quality criteria. They will tell us the quality criteria of evaluation of the internal auditor performance. Mm -hmm. okay. They are telling the characteristics of the organization and parties providing the internal auditing services. This is telling about the performance of the internal auditor. Okay. okay. They given the nature of internal auditing and provide quality criteria for evaluating the internal audit functions performance. Then the interpretation of attribute or performance standards are provided by the IA to clarify terms and concepts. They are displayed in blue box. Mm -hmm. okay. Then we have interpretations to explain. Okay, The IA will explain the standards to us. Then we have the implementation standards. It applies yeah. to specific yeah. types of engagements. Okay, yeah. They expand upon, they have individual attribute or performance standards by providing requirements applicable to the assurance consulting services. This divide, these are specific standards for specific activities. These are displayed in gray boxes in this unit. Okay. Uh -huh. I'm just sending That's you another good. link. This meeting will end in less than you a said, You were sent to my uh, email or uh, WhatsApp? I will sending you on WhatsApp. Okay.